Good afternoon. Peter Klein, Chief Investment Officer and Co-Founder, Align Wealth, with you this, uh, it's actually Saturday of Thanksgiving Day weekend, 2022. Wanted to spend a little time reflecting on the last few weeks and what will likely be a, a bit of a volatile next few months, as we believe. And to allow us to do that, um, let me share my screen, walk you through a few slides, we'll discuss it, and um, we're always welcoming your uh, emails and calls and comments, so feel free to, to do that. So sharing my screen, bear with me, and I guess here we go. Okay, so you can see that we have a um, an assessment with respect to uh, the uh, the markets, and what we're saying, what we have said for a number of uh, months now is that the regime that we've been also used to for the last 40 years is changing. We're no longer in what will be called the, um, let's call it the age of low interest rates on the heels of disinflation. That period is uh, behind us. We believe we are in a new, um, a new period that is likely to see uh, more volatility, higher interest rates, persistent and stubborn inflation, likely on the heels of a movement towards net zero. We think that is part and parcel to this higher for longer inflationary call. And when we say higher, we don't mean that it's going to go much higher from where it is. We're suggesting that it's just going to stay high. Inflation is, a, is, is very uh, insidious. It's difficult to get rid of. Uh, think about the wage inflation as for a simple example. You have inflation and now you're raising uh, wages and all of a sudden you're going to change that? Uh, that's unlikely. And as well as certain prices. So we believe that we are on the other side of the last 40 year reg regime. And to that end, investors are forewarned to be careful and to utilize a new playbook, a playbook that is likely to be very similar to the playbook of the uh, mid, uh, early mid 1970s. Um, so um, be, you know, let's, let's think about that in terms of where we're at. Here's the last 40 years. You can see here that we have a reversal of, of that period. You can see that we were once um, globalized, and we had a lot of great things that happened, very disinflationary things, economic elements that occurred during the last, previous 40-year regime because that we, we had this unusual confluence of, of events. We had the emerging markets. We essentially outsourced inflation to the emerging markets. Guess what? Those, those markets no longer emerging. In fact, we might we're not so friendly with some of them. So the geopolitics is also in, in it's we have, we have anti-globalization in many cases. We're now seeing rises of nationalism. Um, people, prote uh, countries are, are protecting their resources, near sourcing or onshoring. You know, you you don't no longer can agree, can can rely upon the globalization factor for your products and your supply chain. That's inflationary. So this is part and parcel to what we believe is the regime change that we've been talking about. 2023 is right around the corner before you know there'll be holiday season. And um, we just had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you and your family, families also enjoy that uh, we have much to be thankful for. Uh, we're still the greatest nation in the world. And, uh, and, and we will always... Uh, strive to be doing better but there's there are issues ahead of us one of the bigger issues are well that mother's milk of equity returns earnings and, and, and recession is looming this is a graph a chart of the uh, spread between the 10-year uh, bond the treasury bond and the three-month t-bill well, when you see that change go negative, that's called, uh, you know, that's when we are now in potentially a recessionary signal. It's called an inverted 
the yield curve, inversion, right? And so we want to be very careful of this because it has a near, it has a perfect record, a perfect record of calling recessions. And as you can see here, here we go. Uh, yeah, and it's not just a little bit. Um, you know, it, it's gone down uh, a, a good deal below zero. So um, that is a, a, sending a lot of alarms through Wall Street, although in the last couple of weeks, it didn't seem like anyone really cared too much. This is, this is important stuff, folks. Um, and it has a very good record of, of, um, of, of, of pending recessions. And so we, ne we have to be very uh, concerned about, the, uh, about this um, inflection point in the yield curve. In addition, as I said earlier, the earnings. Mother's milk of equity returns. Everything is earnings. And what we have not yet seen, and why we at Align Wealth are somewhat concerned about the first half of 23, is we have not yet seen an analyst take down earnings estimates. Um, and we believe that that is likely to occur. Um, maybe we don't have a very substantial recession. Maybe we have a brushed over recession, a more of a stagflationary environment, but clearly we're going to have a slowdown. The Fed has increased interest rates precipitously. You don't, that doesn't happen without something breaking. We've seen crypto break. We've seen, uh, but we haven't seen much more than that. And that sort of has folks worrying what will be the next thing to fall, the next shoe to fall. And perhaps it is indeed earnings. Uh, certainly, operating margins are beginning to fall from their, uh, you know, their their perch, their high uh, perch, and that's worrisome because obviously, and, exp and frankly, expected with the fact that interest rates have gone up so much, so you would expect a slowdown in earnings and and, and therefore in operating margins. So yet, to the, still to yet to see the the decrease in earnings and uh, from analysts, and then of course from companies reporting. And so that has us on uh, on watch for 23. And clearly, as this uh, chart shows, that when indeed we do see earnings come in, um, we were looking for uh, you know a, a, tr a, a you know a PE ratio that is near 12 at the low, right? We're nowhere near that. Okay, so we've got there's there's, there's some pain potentially ahead. We're mindful of that. These are bear market rallies, we believe, that we've been seeing uh, from time to time. They're to be rented, not owned, uh, and there and faded, and, uh, and going back to a more defensive posture. What we do not want to do, what we fully assume, is the thinking that suggests, hey, get all out or get all in. That's nonsense. That's specula speculation. It does not work. What you want to do is have that well-researched, high-conviction portfolio and then, you know, sort of work the edges a little bit, right? So when things are when things are really washed out and maybe a bear market rally was to occur, and soon enough we'll get to a, a real rally where it's just not a bear market rally. I think that'll be the second half of next year. But then you layer on some more, you know, some more risk assets to that portfolio, put some more capital to work. And then when you're at positions, perhaps like now, although we're in a seasonally positive period, you want to reduce that, right? You want to sell into that strength and you want to raise a little bit more cash. And this is the toggling that we do, but we want to stay invested. Maybe not, certainly not fully, but we want to stay invested. That's the key. This timing does not work. Although I will say this is not timing. This is being mindful and being a steward, right? and allocating around the portfolio. It's a balanced approach. Unless you've forgotten, cash does not go down. It's a true ballast to the portfolio. We're getting a good return on it now for the first time in years, decades. So that's good as well. Now, one of the big concerns we have is, and one of the things that really has not yet come to the forefront of discussions on Wall Street, and they work around the edges a little, they talk about it, is this uh, is this federal the interest of federal debt? This is big. We've talked about it. You've seen our video on uh, on the uh, debt clock. 
you've heard us talk about it for you know, years now, years. And it was like, you know, I'm talking, we're talking in a forest of, of, of no one. But now perhaps this will begin to get some, uh, you know, some interest level out there. And it's concerning. $30 trillion of federal debt. Uh, interest rates were near zero. Everyone said that's no big deal. We can afford it. Guess what? That's no longer the case. And so now we're in a situation where this debt is now costing a fair amount, and that's going to be the story for the next couple of years. And that has us to watch, that gives us worry, that gives us concern, and that's why in many cases we are under or very um, underweight fixed income. Because if you think about it, we don't, the government's going to need to float more and more bonds in order to pay for increasing debt service. Okay. But and this is the reason why we have that portfolio. This is the reason why we stay invested because patience, you know, is a virtue. You know, there will be a time when we work our way out of this and earnings begin to move higher and perhaps we have a, a right sizing of the federal deficit and we move forward. And, and there's new innovations and new entrepreneurial spirits. And, and this is the dyna dynamism that is the American uh, entre you know, entrepreneurial and American markets. This is why, we, you know, we're the greatest economy in the world. And there are other economies, you know, if China, get, China needs to get through their COVID um, shutdown air issues, and and hopefully they will, and that's going to be a, important. This war, of course, is a very big and sad and uh, concerning situation. But this too shall pass. And when they do, markets respond. And as you can see in this particular chart, when they do respond, they respond big. And so this is why we want to stay invested, at least with a portfolio that we can add to as markets get become more mobilized. Now, it's all been about passive investing for the last 25, 30 years, right? So that's been the old regime, essentially. You throw a dart against the wall and buy that ETF, buy that index fund, and you're good to go. It's worked. Um, I don't believe it's going to work going forward. I believe active management is back in force. This particular slide shows you the dispersion between the best and worst performing stocks in the S&P sectors, or well, actually sectors. And so it shows you that if you are doing your research, if you're rolling up your sleeve, doing the homework, thinking outside the box, um, you know, being independent, uh, in, independent in your thinking, and not being a closet, you know, indexer, you can certainly bring value to the table, right? And that's what I think we're going to see going forward. Active management, stock picking, hedge funds, these have been uh, in the desert for a decade plus. And now we believe they are going to see um, an outperform a substantial outperformance versus the indices. And it'll be one of these things, like you see this year, when you see the um, you know the average stock doing a lot better than the S and P, so stay tuned for you know again this is part of the new playbook, right? You want to be idiosyncratic. You want to have an individual thematic approach to the individual to the companies and the investments you're making. Okay, well as I said earlier, be mindful to the idea you know that you cannot time this market, uh, and this is not what we're looking to do. We're looking to stay invested and work the edges, which means, again, you have your core portfolio, super high conviction, well-researched companies, investments, sectors, themes. And then around that portfolio, that core portfolio, you work, you toggle between adding capital and taking capital off the table. You try to do so tax efficiently uh, when it's called for. And you do so uh, mindfully, right? And that's the way you're able to balance the, uh, the, the the glide path for the individual investor. Okay, so where are we allocating? What's the playbook? We we mentioned in the past infrastructure, a wonderfully uh, wonderful position or sector to be in today, given the the need for it, especially in the water sector, which you've heard from me time and time again but also from the simple fact that it's inflation friendly. It allows these, these, these uh, contracts, these in, in infrastructure contracts have built in, in 
inflation protection in them. And that is critically important to the case that we're making with uh, with infrastructure and real assets as well. And you can see here how real assets have done so nice, so much better when uh, when inflation is high. So we want to have a, a, a heavy allocation to real assets and infrastructure and uh, commodities and, uh, and the like. Those are the his commodity super cycle. We believe this has legs. We believe after many, many years of underperformance that the commodity sector, the material sector, energy sector will do very well going forward. So our current playbook is quite simple. We want to overweight cash, respect volatility. This is, good. This is not over. We're going to have ups and downs. You can have these crazy rallies. Then you're, going to, then you're going to see the opposite. And until the markets can get their hands around inflation and higher interest rates and you know, decreased earnings, and that may be sometime next year, the year after, um, then we will then we will see an opportunity to be a bit more uh, strategically allocated. But until that time, we want to be tactically allocated. Ergo, this idea of having the cash and the portfolio in time. Okay. Um, fixed income is not the balance it used to be. Clearly, the 40 year massive bull market in bonds, we believe, is over. And therefore, you're better off, we believe, in having a, 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 an over allocation to, um, to cash and a, a under allocation to fixed income. That said, there's always a, a special situation, there's always an idiosyncratic security or opportunity of fund. We're always going to look out for that. In fact, one such uh, sector that is attractive uh, very well uh, could be the distressed debt area, whereby you're buying uh, a credit or, or bonds of companies that are in stressful periods, distress, and you're buying them on pennies on the dollar, and they restructure and they end up doing very well. And that's an area that could be interesting, in, especially in this market. Um, we want to be an inflation-centric asset classes. We want to have companies and sectors that have pricing power where they can pass along their increased costs to protect their margins. You know, think healthcare, think utilities, think water. So these are the areas that we think are, are still very uh, viable um, in our in the portfolios that we manage. This is where we're where we our playbook essentially. Um, there are uh, still pockets of cheap stocks. Uh, you see Japan value here, resource companies, um, still opportunities to be had there. You have to do the research. You've got to do the homework. This is not the kind of thing you throw a dart against the wall. That will no longer work. Now's the time for stock picking. Now's the time for fundamental analysis, value-based analysis. This is the time for folks like us to help you get through this period. Um, and then here's, here's, a, here's a stat on European equities. And I, you know, we, we joke here, man, there's a war going on. We know it. But you know what? When they look at the very, the most important factor, this has been a seminal study over 40 years, 50 years. Um, and when it, when it was looked at, what factor is the most important factor and it contributes to equity market returns going forward, future equity market returns. And it came out that it's not it's not Fed policy, it's not inflation, it's not uh, earnings growth, it's the price you pay. That's, the, well, that's what gives you the greatest opportunity to do well. If you're paying up, if you're chasing returns, if you're buying into the hubris in the bull market, your return's gonna be lower going forward 10 years. If, however, you're patient and you're contrarian and you're a value investor and you buy what's unloved and misunderstood and cheap, 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 your glide path going forward is usually, and it's historically been shown, to be out, outperforming. So that's why, you know, thinking about Europe right now could be opportunistic. You're buying blue chip companies, right? Blue chip, 150, 200 year old firms that do business around the world. Does it happen to be in France or happen to be in Germany or happen to be domiciled in the UK or Italy? You know, developed countries. This is where you can find some values today. 
curves in the U.S., which is still high comparatively. So we think this is an opportunity. Again, slowly feathering in, not going all in all at one time. So that's it. Appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with you today. Wishing you and yours a happy and healthy holiday season. And really appreciate the opportunity to uh, chat with you. And, and if we could be of any service going forward, please feel free to give us a call at Align Wealth where we can discuss your portfolio, uh, your financial plan, and uh, and really um, you know answer any questions you might have about your portfolio. Also ask us about estate planning. That's another area that we're focusing on here at Align Wealth. Understanding where your current assets are titled and how the legacy, your legacy, is going to be affected going forward. So call us. We're here to help. Have a great holiday season if I don't speak with you. Look forward to chatting again soon. Thank you.